Track number 12, Through a Mother's Day Darkly. What a weird name, right? What a crazy title. I love uh, Philip K. Dick and the title reminded me of one of Skadik's books, of course. Through a Scanner Darkly, that's what it is. It doesn't really reflect the meaning of the song, but it was written on Mother's Day. So that's my excuse. Uh, it's another one of those songs where I had an idea, I set up a session, I picked up the seven string with the wobbly strings and I just did a performance. And that's what's on it. From the beginning of the song to the end, there's that one performance and we just added guitars in and around it and keyboards and things like that. I'm pretty sure this was the first demo that he sent us out of all of them. And it was just like, you know, dark and almost like a metal song, you know? That's when I first heard it, it sounded like a metal, heavy metal instrumental of some kind. And it was so rowdy. It was the song where because it's got voiceover, it really, really made me think about what's going on in the world right now. This is the song which has the social commentary. Just kind of get these images of now I'm in a computer game and I've got a weapon and I need to defend myself and I'm on this crazy other planet and it's like there's who knows who's out to get us. Is it the virus? Is it chemical warfare? Is it social political warfare? Um, you know, is the voice the voice inside my head or is it Big Brother talking to us and telling us the way that things are right now? Has everything changed? Out of the blue, Eric says to me one day, I took excerpts from uh, um, actually the, the, the strip from the scanner, uh, scanner Darkly, is that right? Yeah, and, um, and have the computer talk, the, the little excerpt that I'd chosen, send that to Joe and went, hey man, you know, with your comic books, we should try to do something, try to, to get Ned, uh, his partner in crime, as far as the comic books are concerned, to, um, to do something, to do some, some voices. And it was just like one of those ideas that comes so far out of left field, it's like in somebody else's field, you know? <laughs> so I said, yeah, you just call him. I guarantee you he'll send something back in like 12 hours and, and you're, gonna, you're gonna love it. Sure enough, send it to Ned. Ned sent back some uh, uh, crystal planet sentence phrase and, and it turned that into, into what you hear now. So we go through like a, a again, a, a movie with stuff happening. I mean, you listen to it, you can make the movie yourself. I don't think Eric knew how good Ned was at voiceover. He's got like a thousand people living in his brain. So I stayed out of the way. It was one of those wonderful moments where I, I thought, they've got it. It's a very interesting track because the actual lines from the song are pulled from uh, our Crystal Planet comic book. They are lines straight out of the mouths of the characters as appears in the comic. So readers of the comic will recognize some of the lines and and the characters as well. Since I do the character voices for Crystal Planet in animated form, I already have them ready to go. And they're kind of like, uh, each, each character makes a brief appearance in Mother's Day Darkly. Eric was able to find a place to, to put this dialogue in and around the original guitar performance so that we wouldn't disrupt the flow of this sort of you know, spontaneous guitar performance. This was a very tricky song for me because I had to play 16th notes with my right hand and funky as I could be underneath between kick and snare. It was always changing. So I wrote everything out. There's three pages of this. Very detailed, complex rhythms. It doesn't sound complicated when you're listening to it, but I wanted to catch all the nuances because the drum program was superb. And then I would then turn it into my own, of course. It's strangely melodic, even though the uh, vocal part is not sung. Because again, you always have Joseph's melodies and his supporting harmonies that make something sound so like a complete musical, you know, entity. And then we wind up with this song that sounds, you know, it's got that sort of Star Wars epic quality to it, you know. Uh, and this helped really with the mixing of it. Having that voiceover in there is, it's like, it's like the coolest future beat poetry that you could ever want. And the final touch was that little blues guitar in the beginning. It's so incongruous yet at the same time, it was, for me, it was like the perfect thing to bring it home, to make it really human. And, and it kind of ties together Ned and, and the rest of us.
it's just so heavy. It's a super heavy song, a super heavy groove, and I can't imagine what that'll sound like live if we do it. It just sounds like the end of the world, which is probably what it's about. That would be a dream come true for me to be able to like uh, sneak out on stage somewhere in Amsterdam and uh, and deliver that song. Oh, I'm probably gonna stow away inside of a wardrobe case so they won't have a choice. I'll just pop out. Bah! So I got my oxygen mask packed for that eventuality. 